atmosphere kind of changed and I think we got through maybe two songs before it just kind of broke loose and um, I don't know it just changes things I just I love how when God shows up it changes things and it didn't just change things there I feel like um, Mike released me to pray um, he was calling for the prayer warriors to come pray for each other and they were all looking at him like you want us to pray for each other what you want me to get up and pray for somebody how does that work like nobody moved (laughs) and i i think that's a testament to how we're just so used to pouring out to each other and ministering to each other that it just is second nature so mike looked at me he's i'm like base off gone you know and god had words for like everybody in that room i didn't want to scare roberto's friend i think that was i think it was a new new environment for her i don't think she'd ever been part of a uh Holy Ghost filled environment, so to speak, <laughs> because we drove. But God had amazing things to say to every single person in that room. And the very last person I prayed for was the person that, that organizes these prayer burns. And he was already out on the floor. He was already, you know, he was kind of sitting up, kind of looking dazed, like, wow, you know, in one of those God moments. And God showed me that these prayer burns, our house of prayer, these all of these houses of prayer, they're rivers of oil that are on fire. And I saw that this oil soaked into the ground where these, where these prayers and this worship was being poured out, where people were pouring out their hearts. And this oil caught fire. And it transformed the nations where those prayers were being spoken out. And I, and I, just, I, I, I haven't been able to get rid of that vision. I don't think it was just for him. I think it's all of these houses of prayers. I think it's this place. I think that's why things happen here. And it, I, I, the, 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 the visual of it was so amazing, but when we pray out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, it is, it is so much more than just water. It is the oil. When our cup overflows, when that anointing flows and it catches fire, it changes things. And, oh, we don't even know. Like, I just saw the harvest coming because it enriched the ground so much. That's how that, that multiplication, how, you know, the, the, the harvest shall be ten times, five, you know, more than you can imagine. Because that oil and that fire transforms the land it touches. It changes the atmosphere. And it, and it does something. Once, that, once it changes, once that land is claimed for the Lord, the heavens can open. And God is, it, God comes. In a way that's so special and unique. And, and not that there's anything special unique about that place or that house of prayer, but just the people who come. Yeah. And it's so precious to him. He kept telling, he kept, the way he kept giving so many people were, every prayer you've prayed, every tear that you've wept mm-hmm. are treasures to God. They are precious to him. There are women in that room who I know had been praying <clears throat> and seeking God for who knows what. Yeah. But God wanted all of us to know our prayers, our yearnings, our troubles, our <coughs> woes, everything that we come to him, every word we speak to him is a precious treasure to him. Yes. The Bible says he stores those. He stores them up. They are precious to him. So no matter what's going on, no matter if we feel like we're praying to the ceiling sometimes, or no matter you know what, when we pray, when we take a moment and we just forget all around us and we look to God, right. he treasures those times. And so I just want to encourage us today to, we're shaking it up again this morning. <laughs> God is not done. Uh, what, what happens in those houses of prayer always spill over into our services, and I am um, excited to see what God's going to do. And I hope everybody is ready to saddle up and ride this morning. So in Jesus' name. All right. Yeah, Roberto. To, to add to what you were saying, you know, what happened last night, I was thinking about that, and, and to me, being able to participate in events like that gives us the opportunity to step away from, not only for us, but for other people, from the religiosity of things, if you want to call it that, because I think that's what God wants. It, you know, it's only one church. It's not 10 million churches that, that were founded. It's just the one, the Church of Jesus Christ. and. And I think that gives us an opportunity to actually truly connect with him and come all together. And I think events like that is what's going to bring the church together from all parts of the world. I had an opportunity last weekend to 
visit a, a church that I was invited to over in Johnston. Uh, it was very different, the service. I'm not saying that it was bad. I, I really enjoyed the message. Uh, but I didn't feel the things that I feel here. And, and when I saw that as an opportunity to talk about some of the people that were there, uh, along with the ones that invited me, about the things that happen here, and, and it kind of awakens that curiosity. Hmm, I wonder what are they doing that God's manifesting this way, that's not manifesting here, and things like that. And I think that's what's going to start getting people to come together and, and, and once we get rid of all the, the mundane, that's when the big things are going to happen, the big changes. needs to hear. Jesus is the answer. Right. Not, not what you're believing. You have believed a lie. Right. And, uh, and we need to tell our politicians, all of them, I don't care what party, that we need Jesus back. We have eliminated yes. him from everything. Yes. And we wonder why we have problems. We can't, have, we can't speak as they. The only reason Donald Trump is up in all the polls is because he is so against political correctness, which he said has choked the country. We 
Cindy, uh, we spent the whole night up last night for talking. I just wanted to ask you because she couldn't breathe. Um, she was doing better when I left. Um, I asked her when this all started when I got home. She said it was right about 6 o'clock. It was right in the middle of what we were doing. So um, I know the enemy really ticked off about things. Um, I find it uh, kind of strange <coughs> that uh, the enemy's picking on Sally's house and Cindy's house and Mia's house. Tim's not here right now. She's been fighting on things too, and I, I don't. It, it's mostly unseen things. It's undescribable. The doctors are just scratching their head, and while they're trying to stuff, they're guessing, they're mm -hmm. practicing the medicine, as we know. Um, so I just pray for whatever it is in the unseen realm to be bound off right now in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. yes. And declare to help. Yes. Um, I told her to text me if she needs the ride to the hospital. Well, that's how close it is. Okay. <coughs> But I'm believing in God's healing restoration and that y'all stand with me. Yes, Lord. For Sally and for Lee, uh, for all those that are facing health issues in this place right now. We're yes. claiming those rights um, for healing. Can we, just, can we just pray right now? Yes. Can we just pray right now for healing for those who need it? Sally, do you want to come stand in? Yes,
Angie. Yeah, let's remember Angie as well. Um, yeah, for those in the neighborhood. I don't think Angie's the only one that needs to come and hear a message of hope, a message of acceptance, a message of love. There's so many. There's so many. I mean, I think of Dean, who's a testimony, and just walking by. Yes. You guys were driving by. I was in Waukee. I hadn't been here in years. And I said, I have to go tonight. And then I didn't even know they'd anointed my base the Sunday before. Didn't even know it was mine. Mike didn't, never met me. Didn't know I existed. If we can, if we have ears to hear, but somebody has to pray. Somebody has to speak your name. There are those that God knows. And that's what happens in those secret places. We pray for things we don't even know what we're praying for. That's why we have tongues, because God knows. When we pray for the things, when we have an unction, we don't even know what, then pray in tongues. But speak. We have to speak out. We have to pray. You know, I, yeah, sure.
about the whole service. This really happens. You can't make this stuff up, you know, just like uh, Shelly coming in and being able to be from Waterloo and knowing that pastor. Yeah. Pray for Shelly. She's in Florida until wow. December sometime, too. Amen. But, you know, uh, as a result, I, I mean, I shared it with several people, and uh, somebody called me just out of the blue and was telling me these circumstances and said, do you think your pastor would be? And I hadn't told her to get the story, but she said, it seems like he has such a heart of compassion for people. You know, that uh, screwed up, been screwed over, or, or just screwed their lives up. And so, I, you know, I'm sure he would. <laughs> but, you know, um, that, like you said, that's what it's all about. And so, yeah, it may be inconvenient for us, but people's looking for somebody that really cares. Yes. Yes. The needs are just so phenomenal. When you start sharing these stories, it's like, well, would your pastor talk to me? Would he talk to my friend that's all screwed over? Would he pray with them? We can't make it up, you know. It's just what the Lord wants to do. That's right. I remember years ago when I had Jose living with me, but I still saw that altar. Then Teresa came in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just saw it full of people that, that needed breaking from their bonds of alcoholism and addiction. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it just filter in a little bit here, a little bit there. But, you know, I know that the Lord has a bigger mission than just those one or two or three people. And, right. You know, this is a place that people can really come in and get totally delivered from all those bonds, mm -hmm. bondages that they're under in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So yes. Just, and, and to feel safe, and to and not feel, feel safe. like they're yeah. judged. Right. Right. I mean, the truth is, we all have our mm -hmm. issues, pet peeves, <laughs> if you will. I mean, certain things that bug us more than other things. Mm -hmm. One person, it might be alcohol, somebody else, it might be drugs, or somebody else, it might be <laughs> infidelity, or anything. You know, if you can't just pick something. Never done 
that he cannot put you under his wing. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, that he took, when, when we sit here and talk about the fact that he traded all of our iniquity yes. and gave us all of his righteousness, yes. that's all of us, that's every human being for God's yeah. soul of the world. Yes. yes. And the only thing of it is, the one thing that he cannot do is force himself so I, I really think we have a mission to tell people, look, you, you haven't done anything too bad. I don't care if you've shot up. I don't care prostitutes. I don't care what you've done. As long as you're willing to come get under those wings, yes. they're there. Yes. And your life will yes. change. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. finished work, Lord. Jesus, we stand on your word, Lord. We trust you, Lord. 
Oh, Lord, that we would speak words of comfort, Lord, of invitation to come under the shadow of your wing, Lord, to know that that is the safe place, Lord. That is the place where you work in our hearts and our minds, Lord, where you transform us from glory to glory in those intimate moments with you, Lord. Let us make time to steal away, to steal away and be with you, Lord, one to one, that you may fill our cups to overflowing, that we may offer this wine, the gifts of your spirit, Lord, let the gifts abound in this house, Lord, let the gifts of the spirit abound in this house, Lord, Lord, as the miraculous flows, Lord, as the Rebukes the devourer for my sake, 
and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Uh, Don and Toby, you want to come take the offering this morning? Toby, you want to ask the blessing, please? Thank you. Lord, we're thankful to be here today to be with your people. God, we know a world out there is in dire need of you. We just ask, God, that you will put each and every one of us today to remember that we are your reflection. Yes. We reflect you to this world. Everywhere we go, we have the opportunity to spread you in kind words and in kind deeds. And just being around people to reflect you. Let us take you everywhere, God, yes. and illuminate your goodness to this yes. world. Yes. At this time of Thanksgiving, let everyone know that they are appreciative mm -hmm. and needed by you, God. Yes. You love them dearly, and we are your light to these people. Thank you. Now, God, we just ask that you be with this service today. Bless this offering, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we yes. pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.
hang out with her, church. Just hang in with us. sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land he has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand and he's riding, he's riding a white horse across this land and he's calling out to you and me a sword in his hand and he's riding a white horse across this land and he's calling out to you and me
One more time, one more time.
who are blind even though they have eyes. Bring out the poor who are deaf. God. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you this morning. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Sunday school kids can be dismissed. Thank the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Thanks, Mike. Amen. Thank all of you for sharing your testimonies and positive words for the Lord. Amen. It's always a blessing. Praise God. Also want to thank uh, Roberto for uh, 
stepping in for me a week ago last Wednesday, and uh, also um, Tim, who, who preached for me last Wednesday. They're not here today, but amen. Anyway, I appreciate very much those guys stepping up and uh, taking care of business. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, happy Thanksgiving early to everybody. Hope you all uh, can have a day where uh, you can express your thanks to the Lord and, uh, and enjoy a friendship, and family, and whatever that holiday means to you. Praise the Lord. But uh, thank the Lord. We all have so much to be thankful for, even, even with the negatives that we have in our life. Praise the Lord. And we all got that too, right? Praise the Lord. But the positives, amen, they outweigh the negatives. Hallelujah. When God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Thank the Lord. Okay, well, I'd like to start with the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, Sheila. Acts, chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 1 through 8. Praise God. So if anybody here thinks that you're worse than everybody else or worse than somebody else, look at this. This is the Theophilus guy. Former treatise have I made, oh, Theophilus. So you're not the worst. This is the Theophilus right here. All right, never mind. Praise the Lord. This, the former treatise have I made, O oh, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Amen? Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Yes, yes. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise the Lord. Okay, so this book of Acts is the beginning of all that Jesus said and did. Just the beginning. It's not all of it, but it's the beginning of everything that he said or did. Amen. And it actually ends up with him doing everything else through us. Praise the Lord. So let's go to Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Luke 4, 18 and 19. This is Jesus' first message, amen, having come out of the wilderness, filled with the Holy Ghost, having been tempted by the enemy, and uh, he, he comes to a synagogue, a synagogue that was obviously one where everybody knew him, it must have been close to his community where he grew up, because they, they, they knew who he was, in fact, they say things like, isn't that Joseph's son that, you know, is doing this? So here's what he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, in a microcosm, if you will, in a, in a, in a condensed version, if you will, this is Jesus' ministry. This is it. The Spirit of the Lord is on him. So the Spirit of God has come upon him, just like in the book of Acts, he tells us that the Holy Ghost will come on you to what? To do what Jesus did. Yeah. And we're doing all kinds of stuff that has got nothing to do with what Jesus did, and we're saying it's by the Spirit. Lord. So anyway, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. What is the gospel? Grace. Yes. That's the good news. That's the gospel. Yep. To preach the gospel to the poor. 
He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty yes. them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Christianity is not about good people getting better. Praise the Lord. If anything, it's good news for bad people coping with their failure to be good. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Because the there's some bad people out there. Amen. I know you're bad. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we all are bad. Amen. When it comes to comparing us to God. All are sinners and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So the heart of Christianity is good news. Yes. Amen. Not good advice. Right. Amen. Good technique. Or good behavior. The heart of Christianity is simply good news. Praise the Lord. All right. Continue on here in Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 29. Luke 4, verses 28 and 29. Praise God. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Now that's hard to grasp, isn't it? And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the bow of the hill whereon the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. So he comes to bring good news. He comes to bring grace, deliverance, amen, eyes to be opened, ears to be opened, the blind to see, those that are bound to be set free. And what are they, how is their, what's their response? They try to catch him and throw him off a cliff. So if you think that you're getting bad mouthed, amen, for your stand, amen, for grace, for the goodness of God, for the mercy of God, for the love of God. Amen. Come back and talk to me after you've been on the hill. Amen. After you've been close to the cliff. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because that's what it feels like sometimes. We're walking a tightrope. Amen. Between what religion wants and what we feel like God is saying. You know, we want to belong. People want to be accepted. That's human nature. Amen. But not at the cost or not at the expense of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, too many people have walked away from the church. Not because they're walking away from Jesus. Amen. But because the church has walked away from Jesus. Yeah. Right. Oh, praise the Lord. Read that with this 21st century mind, because God knew we were going to read it. Amen. In the 21st century. People are freaking out and doing all kinds of stuff and leaving the church, not because of Jesus, but because what the church tells them about Jesus. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Luke chapter 4, 22 through 27. Verse 22 through 27. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. This is just prior to them trying to throw him off the cliff, and right after he brings the good news of setting captives free and healing the sick, so on and so forth. Gracious words, words of grace, which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country, but I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, Elijah when the heaven was shut up there three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias or Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Now this is a slap in the face to these religious people that are sitting in this synagogue because what he's telling them is there's all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, starving people and people with needs and wants here in Israel. Right. But the prophet wasn't sent to them. The prophet ends up going to a Gentile who was outside the church, amen, who was not a part of the religious organization right. to meet her need. Praise the Lord. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah, the prophet, or Elijah, and none of them was cleansed except for Naaman, the Syrian, who was another Gentile or another person outside of the religious system. Amen. Jesus is trying to tell these people, you, what you do doesn't draw God. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. It's what you believe right. that will make God show up or manifest, amen, in any given situation right. or circumstance. Amen. So it might not be an overstatement 
to say that if Jesus came to proclaim good news to the poor, to release the captives, to restore sight to the blind, amen, and to give freedom to the oppressed, then Christianity has come to stand for and practice the exact opposite of what Jesus intended. Somebody say amen or oh man, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I don't mean Christians don't believe in grace. It's that the church have a hard time with grace alone. I've never sat in a Christian church where they would say, no, we don't believe in grace. But they get real uptight when it's just grace. When it's not a mixture of what you do and what God does, but simply what God has done. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go back to Acts now, Sheila. Acts chapter 2, and we'll read verses 14 through 21. Acts 2, verses 14 through 21. Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it's, the fir- it's but the third hour of the day, which is like nine o'clock in the morning. He doesn't know me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I work nights. One time I get off at seven o'clock in the morning. I was at the bar a quarter after. Of course, I told myself it's because it's a really dinner time for me. Uh, well, anyway, let's move on to the, somebody else's issues. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Let me just go back to the book of Joel. We're not going to do it now, but you can go back and look it up. Uh, what Joel actually prophesied was more than just that, you know, your sons and your daughters will prophesy and all this. But if you go back to the verse before, Joel was prophesying that God would be gracious or show grace to his people, That's right. and that they would no longer be ashamed. There would be no condemnation, no self-guilt, no shame for them. That's right. That was the message that was coming, praise the Lord. And it will come to pass in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, vapor of smoke, praise the Lord. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not not because you're of this religion or that religion or because you've done this or done that, but because you've called on the name of the Lord, He will be gracious. Amen. Unto you. He'll give you grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And I I just believe that it's time to abandon once and for all, amen, our play it safe religion, and let's get drunk on grace. Hallelujah. These are not drunken as you suppose. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning, but they're acting crazy. Amen. How, how many know you lose inhibitions when you drink? Yeah. Well, that's the danger of it. It's the, it's the blessing and it's the danger. Amen. And it's like with drugs or anything else, you lose all your inhibitions. Why? Because you're not self-conscious. Right. Woo. That's why they seem to be drunk, because they didn't care what anybody thought. God had shown up, amen, and delivered them. They knew that that's not about what I'm doing anymore. It's what God has done, and whoa, this makes me high, 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 high. Praise the Lord. It really gets me off. Praise the Lord. Did you get a hit? (laughs) Well, that's just for a small segment of this group, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I felt that. Praise God. I got it. Amen. This is not belittling God. I'm just saying they used the metaphor. God used the metaphor. I'm just using what God used. Amen. And we need to get drunk, hallelujah, on grace. We need to quit worrying about everything else, quit dealing with everything else, and focus on the one thing that sets us free, that gets us out of ourselves, that gets us out of our hang-ups and our inhibitions and our problems, amen, and just throws them all onto Jesus so that we can be the little children, amen, guilt-free, innocent, that He intended us to be, that He died, amen, for us to be. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the only thing, amen, that can set us free and light the church 
and light the world on fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, I've I, I preached some Pentecostal stuff. Hallelujah in my time. Amen. And I've I, I talked about the power. And I've, I've believed in the power. And I've seen some of the power. Hallelujah. But I'm convinced it only happened because of God, not because of how much I was praying at the time or how much I had fasted in order to see it. God just shows up and said, Here! It's free. Enjoy it. And before the church is ever going to operate in the prophetic word that Joel, that Joel spoke and that was then uh, spoken back again by Peter on the day of Pentecost, we're going to have to learn to embrace grace and grace alone because God is not going to share His glory with another. Amen? Nobody, no Benny Hinn, no Nathan, no, no uh, anybody, you name a, a preacher, a, a prophet, a a, a healing evangelist, whatever you want to call him, you name one, amen, and I'll name you a liar, amen, if he says it is his gift. That's right. amen. amen. There's only one anointing. Yes. One. And his name is Jesus. Yes. The anointed one. That's what the Messiah means. Yes. You get Jesus, you get the anointing. Yes. You get as much anointing as anybody gets. It's the same measure, amen, for everyone. It's the fullness of the Godhead. Every living, believing Christian has the power, whether they know it or not, to operate in the supernatural. And in fact, they're operating in the supernatural even when they don't know that they're operating in the supernatural. Praise the Lord. But you'll never have the confidence and the boldness to step out and act on it without grace. Because the devil will continuously throw up every failure, every weakness, every thought, every attitude, everything that could possibly come between you and a miracle. But he has just given us good news. We've been set free. Our eyes have been opened. Hallelujah. We're no longer bound by the pain, by the bruises, by the suffering that otherwise we'd be dealing with. Amen? I wish I could say, like Don was talking about earlier, and it's true of all of us, I'm sure, if we stop and think about it for a moment, but I'd like to be able to say everything I do, uh, I do it for God. But I don't. I can't say that and be honest. Praise the Lord. But Jesus' blood covers all of my efforts to glorify me. Praise the Lord. I wish I could say that Jesus completely, totally satisfies me. But I'd be lying because he doesn't. I know that may cause some of you to reevaluate your, your uh, you know, feelings about me. But the good news is Jesus satisfied God for me. Yes. Praise the Lord. God is satisfied with me. Not because of me, because of Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Right. The gospel tells of a great reversal. A reversal in which acceptance precedes achievement. Mercy comes before merit. That is the good news. That is what the gospel teaches. Amen? Let's look at these scriptures. Romans chapter 5, Sheila. And we'll just, I'm only interested in verses 6, 8, and 10 simply for the context, okay? Romans 5 and verse 6 to begin with. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for us, the ungodly. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Not those that got their act together, not those that are doing everything right, that have never failed, that have never... That, Got it all once, and then they just went right straight down the straight and narrow and never deviated from that path. Right. Now, if it was for the ungodly that he died. Verse 8, but God commendeth his love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 10. Yes. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That word is the sozo word, the one that means healed, wholeness, prospered, everything. Not just escaping hell, but everything that is included, amen, in the gospel. So let me ask you this question. It's rhetorical, but I'll ask it anyway. Why doesn't our gospel seem 
much like Jesus' gospel. I spent a lot of time, Sally will tell you, I, talk, I talked to her about different times over the years, but I'd, I'd look through here, through the Gospels, and I'd read what Jesus was doing, and I'm saying, you know, I don't see this in church. I don't see his ministry being replicated. Right. And I'm not talking about the, the amount of miracles, although that would come, but the way we reach out to people, the way we minister to people, to one another, it's, what we do in church is so radically different than what Jesus did. So it's, it's no wonder that we don't get the kind of results that Jesus got. Go. Praise the Lord. The truth is, Christians do have the greatest story ever told. Yes. The problem is, most of them just aren't telling it. Right. Right. They're telling their denominational story. They're telling their particular uh, experience story. They're telling everything except what Jesus said and what Jesus did. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, at, in, in, in the Bible, in Genesis, you don't have to go there, Sheila, because I think everybody's familiar. Genesis 1 starts out with relationship, peace, abundance. Everything's good, right? It's not until Gen Genesis 3 Amen. That sin shows up. Praise the Lord. But when we begin with sin, instead of Genesis 1, when we start telling the story beginning with Genesis 3, we are bastardizing or distorting, amen, what the Scripture is actually saying. Amen. Because what happens is when you tell the story that way, you feel spiritually naked. Amen. You feel shame. Praise God. You feel guilt. You feel condemnation. Why? Because it distorts. Those things always distort. But that's not where the story starts. Amen? It starts with relationship. It starts with beauty. It starts with peace. It starts with God and man. So are we Genesis 1 Christians? Or are we Genesis 3 Christians? That's the question that God asked me. Which are you, Nathan? Now, it's, it's true after Genesis chapter 3, we are sinners. But we're still made in the image of God. No matter how broken that image is. That's what God told me. We were children before we were runaways. Praise the Lord. We were his offspring before we became rebellious. Yes. Think about it. When a temple, no, you're not, you are the temple of God. When a temple gets destroyed, all that's left is rubble. It's still a temple. Right? Somebody come along, that's, that was the temple. It's just a pile of rocks and dirt and dust now, but it's still the temple. It's still a temple. Amen? A broken, a cracked, a messed up temple. Yes. But it's still a temple. It's a broken temple that cannot fix itself. The story is you have inherent worth. You have great value. And it's based on who made you. Not you. Luke chapter 4 again, Sheila, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The story isn't about sin. We've made it about sin. We've made it all about Genesis 3 and everything from then on, all we ever want to talk about, I'm talking about the church and the religious, is a sin. So it's all about sin management? No, it's not. It's not about sin management. It's about restoration of all things. Of all things, praise the Lord. God's putting His world back together and He's using the very people who broke it to do it. Hallelujah. He's got a sense of humor, church. 
Amen. I mean, think about it all throughout the scriptures. When, when Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, who was the benefit, who was the beneficiary, let me say, of his being imprisoned and uh, beaten and lied about and everything else? Who, the ones who put him in prison. The boys who sold him off into slavery were the ones that ended up benefiting from what they had done. From the evil they did, God used it and blessed them with it. That's the God that we serve. We, we think, man, justice should have fallen on them. Every one of them should have had the scurvy or the plague or the you know, leprosy or something bad should have happened. But nothing. what happens is they get blessed. They get protected. They get fed. They get honored. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's the gospel, church. God is recreating, remaking everything in the person of Jesus himself. And we have a tendency to use formulas and we turn our church story into an assembly line. And I mean... This, this is an example for you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against praying prayer for salvation. But there isn't any in the Bible. There isn't any prayer in there that says, Jesus, I, I receive you as my Savior. And I, I confess all my sins, and now please forgive me and take me to heaven with you. It's not in there. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. It's not a rote prayer. It's not some liturgical thing that we go through. And that's true for everything. I, I'm all for altars and people coming and praying. I've, I've done my share of it over the years. But I'm saying this. That's, that's an expedient. It, it's actually even a Philistine expedient. It's not biblical. It's just what we do. Because at some point we were so hurt and, and, and so messed up we had to cry out to God. And so we fell on our face somewhere. And the church said, hey, that worked. Let's, let's do that. So now every time somebody is crying out to God, we want to bring them up to the front and put them in the thing and everybody do their stuff. Because that's become an assembly line approach where God is a one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. Your experience, salvation I'm talking about, may be totally different than mine. Right. You may not have needed what I needed. But you needed something, and the something you needed was a somebody, and the somebody you needed was Jesus. And that's what he wants. He wants us to come to him, amen, however we can do it. Yes. Just as you are doesn't mean in a pair of Bermudas, amen, and a halter top. Right. <laughs> I mean, it can be, but that's, not, that's what we tried to make it into. We've tried to say, okay, so now it's just come as you are. It doesn't matter how you look, and it doesn't. But we've substituted our attire for a attitude. Right. Right. It's just, anybody ever have a come to Jesus moment? Yeah. Where you just realize if, if he's not real, I'm sunk. Yeah. Right. And Jesus, show me that you're real. I mean, that's the way it was for me. It was just, God, if you're real, do, you got to do something because I'm, I'm out of control here. I can't do this anymore. Right. Now, that may not have been what you needed to say. You had something in your heart that was crying out to God for an answer, for a reality, for a truth. And so you did it your way. It's good. It's all good. But to try to give people three steps to Jesus programs and, and you know, uh, an assembly line kind of punch it out here like that, it doesn't work for people. And that's why somebody comes along and I tell them, now this is what I did. Do this. And God dramatically changed my life and he'll do it for you. And then they don't have the same experience and they're going, he must either be a liar, amen, or God won't accept me. No, God wants you. He doesn't want many me. Praise the Lord. He wants you. To have the relationship with him, not some voyeuristic, second-hand Nathan relationship. He wants it to be your relationship. He wants you to have the relationship. Whatever that is, however that turns out to be, will be a good thing. Yes. Because he'll give you what you need, not what I needed. He'll give you what's deepest in your heart that you don't even maybe know how to ask for. Hey, I had issues I didn't even know I had. I had the, the big ones were so big that I couldn't see all the rest of them. So I wasn't even asking for help with those areas because I didn't know I needed any help. I thought it was just this thing. There's a couple of deals here. That's my issue, you know. 
The truth is, the reason I had those issues is because I had all kinds of other issues that I didn't know that I had, which was causing me to act out in certain ways. And I actually took Psych 101. I should have known that. <laughs> but even if I knew it, I couldn't do anything about it. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, if I have learned anything about Jesus, I've learned he doesn't like formulas. He doesn't like cut and dried procedures. Do it like this. Yeah. Everybody, do it like this. Yeah. He dealt with everybody individually. Yeah. Whatever their situation was, he dealt with them because they had the issue. Right. Not the guy that he had just healed uh, two hours before. This is a different guy in a different situation with a different mindset, with a different background, with a different issues. Amen. And he wanted to bless him. He wanted to be in relationship with him. Yes. I don't want to just carry over the last relationship that I had with somebody else and, and make you. Anybody, it, it, look, it's like being married, divorced, and remarried. You can drag all the mess from the last one right into the next one. Has nothing to do with that person. The only common denominator is you. But we keep blaming the other person, and it's so weird because after four marriages, I keep getting these same stupid women. <laughs> I, mean, I, keep, I, keep getting, I keep getting these dysfunctional women. What is it? Some kind of a, you know, I mean, is it punishment from God? I mean, I was good to my mother. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? I'm being a little facetious here, but that's what we get. And, we, and it happens in any relationship. I'm just talking about marriage, but it can be in any relationship. You wonder why everybody's a jerk. Why is everybody so, hey, I've had to ask myself this. Why is everybody so hostile? What in the, is wrong with everybody? Oh, yeah. I had a Jesus encounter at uh, quarter to two this morning because the neighbor's dog's in heat, and my dog just wants out of the house. But he's too stupid to know he'll freeze to death before she'll come out. So I kept hearing him. He's going on and on and on. All kinds of things that dogs don't normally do. So I get up, I finally, I get up, I stumble out, trip over a pillow that I'd already thrown on the floor, <laughs> run into the cedar chest, and, and I'm mumbling, and I'm, you know, I might have cursed, I don't, I'm not sure, because it was really late, and I was tired, so I, might, so I don't know what came out, but I know when I got to the kitchen, I said, shut up, you idiot, you're going out, and if you freeze to death, it's your own fault, <laughs> so I sent him out, and as soon as he got outside, he, it sounded like, uh, you know, Oh, I mean, it went on and on. I thought, oh, my Lord. This guy, he's got it bad, and that ain't good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So I wandered around the living room, the kitchen. I kept thinking, oh, God, i got to go to sleep. i got to get some sleep. Finally, I let him back in. I went back to bed. I wasn't in bed 15 minutes, and yep, 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 yep. I thought, if she doesn't get up and let him out, we're going to be listening to this all night. And we did. All night. Until about a quarter to seven when I finally got up and let him out again. And he wanders over to the lot line, sets right on the edge of the lot line because we got an invisible fence, and he sits right there and stares at their deck. Oh! <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now at my age, I don't even remember why I said that. I think from lack of sleep. I'm sure it had a... I, I'm sure there was a reason for it. Oh, maybe it'll come to me later, praise the Lord. Anyway, pray for me and my dog. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I was reliving it. It was so real. Well, anyway, anybody want a dog? He's really a good dog. But, uh, praise the Lord. All right, Leviticus chapter 16, verses 7 through 10. And if I think of why I said all that, I'll, I'll tell you about it individually. Praise the Lord. It 
it sounded like a really good reason to share, like there was something really solid behind it, but apparently not. Hallelujah. Leviticus 16, verses 7 through 10. Amen. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him up for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Praise the Lord. And I think I've talked about this before, but it is just so uh, appropriate. that See, the second goat has always fascinated me. It's a goat that is sent out into the wilderness never to be seen again. Amen? It's called a scapegoat. Well, Jesus wrapped up all of these symbols and these types and these shadows, all of these traditions in himself. So the goat is simply a shadow of the real thing, which is Jesus. And we are called to take the deepest, darkest, worst sins that we've committed and reach out our hands and put them on Jesus. He took our sins to the grave like a goat to the wilderness. You know, there's a lot of people that are probably offended. If I was really to tell you everything, which I'm not a complete idiot, just kind of an idiot, so I don't tell you everything. But I tell you enough to let you know I'm all messed up like everybody else. Amen? Some people can't even handle the little bit that I do tell them. Yeah. Especially the religious people. Yeah. You, you what? Yeah. You, how many... Yeah, so, you know, you see what I'm saying? But God knew all this. Praise the Lord. Didn't make him nervous, didn't bother him at all. So I say a lot of these things not to draw attention to myself, not, not to, cause, I mean, who wants to be humiliated? But on the other hand, I really believe what God said. I really believe that I am a new creation. Doesn't mean those things didn't happen. It doesn't mean that they, they go away, that, that they've disappeared. But in the eyes of God, they're out in a wilderness someplace, and he doesn't see any of it. He doesn't know anything about it. I can repeat it all I want to. He doesn't even know who I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. That is the message people need to hear. It's over. It's been dealt with. Oh, but I just, I, I just did it again. Past, present, future. No longer. There's just now with Jesus. Eternity with Jesus that covers every failure. Amen? He took our sins to the grave like that goat did to the wilderness. Amen? And the beauty is he left them in the grave. Praise God. We have new life. Peace, forgiveness. We are a new creation. Evil doesn't win. And that's what people need to hear. Everybody needs to hear it. I mean, well, let's, let's read this one more time, and then I'll wrap it up. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 21. Praise God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say to them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Yes, yes. In the book of Acts, he tells us this book is all about everything that Jesus began to say and to do. The book of Acts is a continuation of the life of Jesus in the church, in the body. That is our ministry. There isn't any other ministry. There isn't any addition to that ministry. That is the ministry. That's yours. It's mine. 
because it was Jesus's. Yes. Amen? Amen? Evil doesn't win. No. Even when it looks like it wins, it still loses. Yes. Praise God. Yes. There's a story about a guy who, and I'll close with this, no more scripture. Um, his name was Eddie. And he lived near the beach. <clears throat> and every Friday, for over 30 years, People could set their watch and the calendar by this guy. Every Friday, he'd show up on the dock with a bucket of shrimp. And he'd walk out to the end of the dock, and he'd hold that bucket. And pretty soon, there'd be little white objects coming closer and closer and closer and closer until they would just be all over the, the pier, all around in the water. They were seagulls. And he'd start dropping shrimp. And with every shrimp that he would drop, he'd say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, until he used up all of the shrimp that were in his bucket. He'd turn around, go back to his car, drive home. A week later, same thing. Everybody kind of thought he was just crazy Eddie is what they called him. They thought he was just kind of nutty because they'd see him out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But what they didn't know was this Eddie, was Eddie Rickenbacker, who during World War II, Franklin Roosevelt sent him <clears throat> and uh, I don't know what it was now, I think eight, six or eight guys to this island for a mission, for a secret mission. They were gonna fly off of this island and uh, bomb a certain part of uh, Japan. But they never made it because they shipwrecked or was torpedoed on the way to the island. And the only survivors were him and these eight guys in a raft. After eight days, their food ran out and their water ran out. And they decided to pray. So the group of them all began to pray. And they said, Lord, if you don't bring us some kind of food, we're going to starve. We have to have something to eat. A week went by. They hadn't had a bite to eat. They prayed again. They said, Lord, you've got to help us. We'll starve to death. If you want us to live, you've got to do something supernatural. After they had prayed and they were all weak and tired and burnt by the sun, they, he laid back his head against the edge of the raft, pulled his cap down over his eyes, started to go to sleep, and just before he fell asleep, he felt something on his head. And he thought, Lord, help me to not miss this opportunity. And like a flash, he reached up and grabbed it. It was a seagull. Wrung its neck, and they ate that bird. Everything they could eat. They plucked the feathers out of it, and they ate every other, they ate, them, ate this whole bird, everything but the intestines. And the intestines they used as bait to catch fish. Wow. So then they could use the bait to catch more fish. Mm -hmm. And for 40 some days, they spent on this raft and survived because of this seagull. Wow. So every day, for the rest of his life, for over 30 years, he'd go down, buy a shrimp, take it out, and to these birds who didn't have a clue why he was doing this, he'd say, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what Jesus has done yes. for us. Yes. <clears throat> and that's what Thanksgiving is about. Thank you, that's what our lives are about. All we do when we reach out to somebody else is basically just saying, thank you. They don't know why. They're not connected. They don't know you. They don't know me. But we know him. Yes. And it's our way of thanking him. It's our way of saying, thank you for giving your life so that I could live. Yes. And help me to give something back to others. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. He's a good God.
and he's done everything that needs to be done. All we need to do, be thankful and share it with somebody else. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great Thanksgiving. Appreciate your patience this morning. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.